Greetings, Spitz Planetarium users. This is Dan Zielinski of Jenks Planetarium, and this is Episode 7, Sound Editing with Audacity. We're going to go through several of the features of Audacity and how you can use them to increase your planetarium productions. I've provided several of the files that I'll be using during the tutorial so you can download them and practice them with me. You can find them in my Dropbox. This is an Audacity screen. We're going to go over three of the basic sections used in common editing. First is the playback controls. This is simply where you can stop, start, replay, record, rewind your recordings. Second would be the track itself. This appears in the bottom and will be where you do all your editing. Lastly, and what we'll spend most time on, is going over the toolbar. These are the tools used to edit your track. Of these six commands, we're going to start with the selection tool. This is the tool most used when navigating through your track. Once you have selection tools selected, you can then click anywhere on your track and that will move your timeline to that location. If you click and drag, you can highlight parts of your track. This is good for editing just certain areas or if you just want to listen to certain areas. If you want to increase or decrease the size of your selection, you can do so by simply placing the cursor on the edge of your highlight and either dragging close, bigger or smaller. One last hint is if you hold down control when clicking with the selection tool, it'll automatically play from that point in the track. This is great for quick previews of the recording. Next is the zoom tool. I'm going to explain how to use it, but I'm also going to explain why you won't be using it very often. Once you have the zoom tool selected, simply click on the track and you'll move in to better view that area. Right clicking brings you out. You can left click elsewhere and zoom in, or you can hold down shift and click and that'll also take you out. You can also drag an area and zoom in on just that area. This is great for really zooming in on specific areas. Again, right clicking or shift left clicking brings you out. What I find faster though is with whatever tool you're using, simply hold down control and scroll the mouse wheel up or down. This is a much faster and handy way of zooming in and out on the fly. Next in line is the envelope tool. This is used when you want to adjust volumes. When you click on the envelope tool, three sections will appear on the track. A dark blue, a gray, and a white. Simply click on the dark blue and drag it up or down. Down lowers the volume of a section, while up, of course, increases it. You put checkpoints and you adjust volumes as you will. This is a great way of creating crossfades or fading certain areas that need to be quieter than others. If you have a checkpoint you don't need, simply grab that checkpoint and drag it to an empty place on the screen. The time shift tool is used when you want to line up narration with your soundtrack. Here are three tracks I want to line up. The bottom one is the music track. I'm going to open that up so I can see it better and open up the top one so I can line it up. Once I have time shift mode connect, uh, selected, I can now move this soundtrack to wherever I need it. I can switch and do it to this other line as well. I can also use the time shift to move tracks onto other tracks, like so. This allows me to get rid of tracks altogether, making it easier to work. If you want to move more than one track at once, you need to use your selecting mode select both ones you want to move, go back to your time shift, and then drag both of them. Next is the draw tool. This is used for very, very precise adjustment of your soundtrack. Select the draw tool, then using control in your mouse wheel, zoom in as close as possible to the part you want to adjust. The draw tool only works from extremely, extremely zoomed in areas. These dots will appear when the draw tool is ready. 
You can now literally adjust the soundtrack any way you want by raising and lowering of the sound. Ideally, you want you use this to remove noise or little clicks that show up on your track. So take all the dots and simply line them up on the midline. Multi-tool mode is basically all the other modes put together into one. I don't like using it. It's a bit clunky. It's hard to get exactly what you want when you want it. I suggest not using it and simply rely on the other five. The next part of the video will be the live part. I'm going to edit a sound wave in real time explaining my procedures and thoughts and techniques of why I'm doing so. Again, I have supplied all files that I'm using for this video below. Feel free to use those files and edit the files with me. Welcome to the live portion of this video. I wanted to make a live portion so that way I can take you through a step-by-step -step of editing an entire wave. You know, go over my thoughts and why I do things and show you how I'm doing it. In order to do this, of course, we need a wave to use. So I'm going to go up to File, go to Import, and Audio. This should open up a menu with all your sound files. I simply find the file I want, which is Line 25C in Audacity, and open that up. This is the file I'd like to edit. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine, specializing in solar system exploration. Serial number J3NK5, class 1.4. Now this is a line in our new production, uh, Spaceship Tatum. Uh, but it's not completely ready. And this is, this is straight off the press. This is straight off the microphone. I want to make some edits to clean it up for the production. The first thing we need to do is take it from mono to stereo. You will notice that only this top line actually has sound being produced. This bottom line is silent. Basically, this means it's only going to come out of the left speaker and not the right speaker. I want this changed. So I'm going to click on this square, which highlights the entire wave bring down the menu and split stereo to mono. It now takes both the left and the right and actually makes them each attract themselves. I want to get rid of the bottom one, click on the top one and hit control D. This will duplicate that one and now we have two copies of the left speaker. I'll simply then bring down this menu again and make stereo, make stereo track. It'll automatically take the one below it and make it the right speaker. So now I have the equal effects from the left and the right speaker, which should improve your sound. Go for it. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine, specializing in solar system exploration. Serial number J3NK5, class 1.4. Now that sound is coming out of both left and right speaker properly, the next thing I want to do is edit the length of the line. We have two issues here. First off, she recorded a very long line, which I no longer like. So I want to get rid of this long part at the end. I don't think it's needed anymore. Also, there seems to be a really handsome guy. I can't really tell. He sounds really handsome, though. But he's talking at the beginning. I don't want him there either. So what I'm going to do is go up to my selection tool, click up against her start of her line, and select everything before it. This should get rid of anything in here. As soon as I hit, cut. Now that beginning talking is gone. That was just me telling the actress that the mic was ready to go. I just simply cut that out. Now this long part at the end, I also need to get rid of. I just don't think it's necessary anymore. So I'm going to click between the two lines, then simply drag to the end of the line. Now I could hit cut again, but to introduce other ways of doing things to speed up your work, simply hit delete on the keyboard and it is gone. So the new line we're dealing with sounds like this. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine, specializing in solar system exploration. Nice and concise. The next thing I want to do is get rid of background noise. If you listen very carefully, there's a little 
little hiss, little hum in the background. Yeah, that's used probably the computer fan, the air conditioning fan, just background noise. I want to get rid of that. I introduced this in my last video, but I want to do it again because of how important this is. First off, we need to define what is noise. So prior to the actress ever recording anything, I had to record nothing. So I'm going to load this blank track of her standing behind the mic saying nothing for about 30 seconds. I simply then take that track with my selection tool and highlight a good portion of the center of it. So I'm doing about 20 seconds worth there or so. I go up to effect, noise removal, and click get noise profile. What that tells Audacity is that this is noise. I can now close this because we are done and you can do this now for every wave that you ever uh, edit from this point on will always use the same noise profile including the one we're on. So I'm going to click this square to highlight the wave, effects, noise removal and this time just hit OK. Audacity knows what is noise, takes it out of the wave and now should, you should have a nice crisp sound. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine specializing in solar system exploration. That sounds far better than the previous version. Now I'd like to edit the beginning. Listen carefully at the very first kind of syllable she says. I am Tatum. I am Tatum. She says the word I very strongly, very, very accented, and, and it's, it, it's much louder than the rest of the wave. I want to balance that out. I want to bring that syllable to match the rest of the wave. To do that, we're going to use this envelope tool. Now, I want to get in closer to this wave so we can edit it with some pre uh, precision. Uh, now, I could use the, mag the zoom tool here, simply change it to the magnifying glass, left click on where I want to zoom in and it'll zoom in. I can right click if I get too close or I want to move out. What I really prefer to do is keep the tool that I want to use, hold down control and then use the mouse wheel either up or down. I find that much quicker. Uh, you're going to be zooming in and out a lot. You don't want to have to keep coming up to this menu to hit the magnifying glass. So use control and the mouse wheel up and down. All right. So we're going to zoom in on this little section right in here. There we are. This is the section I want to change. Now, when you collect the uh, or select the envelope tool, you'll notice that you get a dark blue line on top, a gray area, and then this white area, and then repeat it until the bottom of this side. This is basically a volume control. I can drag that dark blue line down, and you can see it literally reduces the volume of the entire wave. But if I click elsewhere, I can move it up and it will then connect the two points in between. And I can add as many little weird little things as I can, or I want. Now I only want two, so I'm just gonna take these and drag them off the menu so they don't show up. I only need to reduce the volume of the very first word, so I'm gonna put this near the beginning. The second one, I'm gonna put it somewhere after the word. Again, the rest of the wave sounds good, just that first word needs a little bit dampening. So this should do that. I zoom out to so make sure it looks so decent. It does. Let's have a let's have a here. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine, specializing in solar system exploration. That sounds far better than the previous versions. It really did dampen that first syllable and make it match the rest of the wave. Now we get to the nitty gritty. There are two spaces in this line where there's just a slight error. Just little tiny clicks that actually happen between lines. One of those areas is in here. If you notice, there's these three little tiny, just little dots that are showing up on the sound. Well, if you listen to those, you'll actually realize that they're just little tiny clicks from the actress. Bling. Not quite sure if that shows up on the uh, or is, is being heard by this microphone, but they're just little clicks of her mouth. It's just her, you know, preparing her mouth for the next word, and the mouth will do that. Well, if you want to get rid of those, you simply do what I've done. You take the selection tool, 
you highlight over those little clicks and then you come up here and simply hit silence audio what that'll do is literally blank anything in that section so you don't hear it so now you can play that all day and not hear a thing that's one way to correct it now she does this in one other location and that's at the very very end of the wave over here so if I zoom in you'll actually see it back here uh, there's actually three one here one there and one there now these two are pretty far are far enough from the wave that I could probably just silence this one out those two out but this one's pretty close to this wave I don't want to really silence that out because it may make her line here seem to cut out early so what I want to do is I want to just want to manually edit that out plus this gives me a great way of introducing the draw tool so I'm going to click on the draw tool and in order for this to work, you want to be right where you want to zoom, and you need to get close. So I'm going to hold down Control, mouse wheel up, making sure to keep my cursor near that dot. And you see, once you get close enough, dots appear on the line. That's what you want to edit out. This is a great way to really precisely edit these out. So I'm going to take these little, just little clicks. I mean, they're so minor. But I'm going to move those onto the neutral line. By doing that, we will get rid of the clicks. And because it's close to the other line, we won't edit that out. So now that I move that, move it out, I'm simply gonna click here and let's listen. Specializing in solar system exploration. Now her line isn't cut off, but there's also no, no click at the end. The last thing I'd like to do to this line is actually give it a robotic sound. The character is gonna be more, more of a robot that interacts with the audience. So this gives me a chance to introduce you to, to the many effects that Audacity can do to your lines. So what I'm going to do is highlight the entire line, go up to effects, look at all these effects that you can have your uh, wave do. Uh, really fun to play with a lot of these and learn them as you play. I have been playing around with this G-verb and that's what I'm going to use to make her sound a little bit more robotic. So you click on it. Now, any of the sound effects you click on are usually going to have some options. You can change around, play around with them, see what you like. Well, I've played around with this one, and actually I like this very simple. Everything at zero, and these guys over here around 90% or so. But what that's done is going to affect the voice and give it more of a metallic, echoey sound, making her sound more like a robot. Have a listen. I am Tatum, a talking, astrologically traveling, universal machine specializing in solar system exploration. Now this wave is done. We've edited length, we've removed the noise, we've removed some clicks, uh, we've even changed some volumes to level it out. This is a beautiful wave for the show. It's ready for the production. Last thing to do, of course, would be to save it. So I'm going to go up to File, go to Export, and then it will ask you what you want to save it as. So we're just going to save this one as final product. I usually just hit OK through this menu. You can add titles if you'd like, but I just hit OK and we were good to go. One last live portion really to demonstrate the last button that we really didn't use in the last video. Time Shift Tool. This is a great way to line up narration with music or just two lines that needed to have more space between them you can spread them out. In this example, I'm using three files that were used in the show Spaceship Tatum. She says the word 60 in this top line, the word 7 in this middle line, and the words moon detected in the last. I want to line these up to sound like a computer saying them all at once. Right now, it just sounds like this jumble. In order to move those, I'm going to use the time shift tool. I'm going to zoom out to give myself some space and I'm just going to first start with a basic move each line to the end of the previous. So now it sounds like this. 67 moves detected. Where it does sound robotic, it sounds a little broken. So I'm simply going to move things until their timing sounds good. So I'm going to move 7 closer to 60 so it's set quicker and move moon detected a little bit closer as well. Now let's listen. 67 moves detected. Now this time the 7 seemed to jump pretty quick. So I'm going to move the 7 away 
and the moon detected will wait as well. 67 moves detected. That sounds good. Now you would simply hit File, Export, and we'll say 67 moons, and hit OK. And now all together as one wave, you should see the wave. Where is it? 67 moons. 67 moons detected. Please comment below or email with any questions you have. Hopefully this gives you just the basic starting skills to start your Audacity sound editing. This has been Dan Zielinski of Jenks Planetarium wishing that you always have clear skies inside.